Shalom, shalom, and greetings from Teshua community. I am Ima Raphael, and I come today with a short message on the word commitment, only for the daughters of Zion. You know, Ray, I wanted to know what did I want to teach on, and he said, just give me one word, one word. So I had to give it a little thought, and when I finished thinking, it took me about, I say five to ten minutes, and it's, what is my commitment unto Almighty Yah? So as I gave him the word, he found, got, gathered some scriptures together, and he said, I gave him a heart one this time. But can I tell you, it's harder for me than it is for him. So we told him, Yah, for the messenger's commitment unto Almighty Yah, that he may help a lowly one like me to be able to expound on it and try to bring some understanding to you, daughter that you'll have something to help you to press on this walk in Almighty Yah. But before I begin the teaching, we want to hear from our little ones here at Teshua. They always like to sing and quote scripture, so they're going to come before you today with some songs, and they will quote the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
All right, Daughters of Zion, it says, What is the commitment of a faithful wife? The aspect of commitment, I will talk of seven of the qualities of commitment. The number of perfection in a perfect bond of marriage. But not only should our commitment be unto our ish, our commitment must be unto Almighty Yahweh. For he did send Yahshua HaMashiach to save us. So we're faithful in our dedication, our devotion, our loyalty, the bond, obligation, duty, covenant with our ish, it should be the same to Almighty Yah. And it's not something you can just practice once a month, every two months, once a week. It's something that we must practice every day in our lives. When you truly love someone, you think about them all day long. Your thoughts may go towards cooking or cleaning the house, but they always will come back to the one that you truly, truly love. And when you really have an affection, a commitment unto Almighty Yah, your thoughts will be on Him. How can I please? So as I asked Rick about the word commitment, the seven words that he gave to me, we're going to speak on that today, that not only has it encouraged me, because I've already read these scriptures, but I pray that they encourage you, daughters, and to give you the strength to stand in the evil hour that we must combat with. Hallelujah. So the devotion, the most beautiful aspect of it, is fidelity, faithfulness, affection, care, caring, warmness, admiration, there are, these are the fibers of a tough wife in her devotion to her ish and most of all to Almighty Yah. For an example of a tough wife, we're going to talk about Eleazar, his wife coming from the book of Maccabees. And Eleazar was willing to lay down his life because he made a stand for Almighty Yah. He had purpose, he wouldn't do anything to defile himself, his mind, his household, and he, he withstood the king, and he obeyed the creator. But as he died, he had put something, not only in his sons, but in his wife. And his wife made a stand. And Eleazar left his wife with seven sons to, to raise. And can I tell you, daughters of Tezion, she didn't break. Because her commitment, not only to her husband, but it was unto Almighty Yah. So as I get ready to get into this, I want you all to come, open up your mind so that you can hear and you can receive. Don't judge anybody but me, myself, and I. Examine your heart and you'll know where you stand with Almighty Yah. And He doesn't leave you hanging. He'll show you how you can get things right by just committing unto him and changing your ways. So I want to start reading with Maccabees chapter 15, verse 5. It says, considering that this mother, she's the weaker sex, she had given birth to many. They are more devoted, most mothers are more devoted to their children. 15 and 6. It says, The mother of seven boys, more than any other mother, loves her children. In seven pregnancies, she had implemented in herself tender love towards them. And because of the many pains she suffered with each of them, she had sympathy for them all. Yet because of the fear of Almighty Yah, she disdained the temporary safety of her children. So knowing if she had have changed anything that her husband had told her to do as far as obeying the Torah, if she had changed anything, her sons would have lost out. Not only would the sons have lost out, but she would have lost out. But this wife had committed unto Almighty Yahweh. No matter what it takes, I shall stand I will instruct my sons in righteousness that they may stand for Yahshua HaMashiach. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. So, Doris, as we walk this life, we must understand there's nothing in the world but heartache, pain, no shalom, no peace of mind. Y'all say, I'll keep you in perfect shalom if you keep your mind on me. There's nothing that the world can offer you to get you into the kingdom. If you had all the riches in the world, it still would not get you into the kingdom. Remember, Almighty Yah has created all things. He has created tough. You call it good. He has created evil. So those two he has created. He has created us to shahar him. We must worship Almighty Yahweh in our daily living, in our daily thinking. If we're not faithful in the small things, daughters, you're not going to be faithful in greater things. So you have to learn what little you have. You work with the little that you have. You say, well, I don't have a big house. I have, I'll say you have a two-bedroom house. And you have seven sons. Well, you make use of it. If all of them have to sleep in one bedroom and you sleep in the other, you keep it clean, you keep it well ordered, you read Torah in your home, and you instruct, we take care of what little we have. Because if you destroy it, then you have nothing. So you put what's right into them, and you practice it daily, and they will make a stand for your sure Hamashiach. Maccabees 15 and 9. It says, not only so, but also because of the not notability of her sons and their ready obedience to the Torah, she felt a greater tender tenderness towards them because they were obedient towards the Torah. It made her care for them even the more. When you instruct your children in what's right to do and they obey that, it makes you love them even the more. Yes. And whatever they ask for, if it's in your means to give, you will not withhold. Maccabees 15 and 10. It says, for they were righteous and self-controlled, brave and magnificent, and loved their brothers and their mother, so that they obeyed her even to death in keeping the ordinance of Almighty God even to their own death, you would say to their own hurt, they would not disobey the Torah of Almighty Yah. And daughters, I can say, I've been young and now I'm old, and you don't see many that are striving or even pressed that way today. You say, well, let your children do their own thing. Well, if they do their own thing, they're going to destroy themselves. Because even as we wrestle every day with unclean thoughts, the powers of hell, your children wrestle with those spirits too. So as we equipped ourselves with this Torah truth, it will make you free. And who Yahshua makes free is free indeed. So I'm free today to be able to come before you daughters to share what little I have learned. And as I get older, I understand the more significance of this truth that it will keep your mind if you keep it in the book. Hallelujah. Maccabees 15 and 11. It says, Nevertheless, though so many factors influence the mother to suffer with them out of love for her children, in the case of none of them were the variants tortures strong enough to prevent her reason. She held on to the Torah truth. Nothing. The trials of life the discomforts of life, it did not persuade her to give up on Yahshua HaMashiach. A wife's care of devotion should be the same as expressed by the husband to each other. The magnitude of care expressed here in Corinthians. And it's saying, what it's saying here, daughters, the same love and the magnitude that a woman has for her ish the ish must have the same for his wife. So we honor each other. Rek honors me and I honor him. I know my place and he knows his. I know he is the head. I am the weaker vessel. And when I need strength, yes, I can go to the head. And there are times I just get on my knees before Almighty Yah. But I know who is the head of my house. Hallelujah. So we want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 23. 
It says, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but Yahweh has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacks. That there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. So daughter, in Yah's community, in this walk of life, there would be there are people that have different levels in this walk. You have elders, you have younger ones in Torah, you have older ones that have just come on, but they're still like babies because they're not where the elders are in this walk of life. So that weak one, if they stand strong with those that are strong, they can learn from that one. That's why we as daughters, we must learn from each other and we must always be examples one to another. Not that we have, yeah, there are stronger ones in this walk of life, and you learn from that one. You don't try to show them what you know, but you learn from the stronger ones. That's why women of all, we, we are the weaker vessels. We talk too much sometimes. We say things that we ought not to say. We don't like to be instructed. We're all made out of the same dirt, daughters, the same dirt. I've been there, done that. So I'm saying unto you, if you have daughters or an elderly woman that has walked this walk and has an experience in this truth, you can always glean from her. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. There are others in the body that have just started this walk. But daughters, as they see you as an example, they can pattern their lives after you. As you help them and instruct them in this truth, you will help that weaker vessel. Hallelujah. In Yah's house, there are vessels of honor, Vessels of dishonor, the vessels of gold, brass, silver, wood, stubble. So we're not all in the same place, but we must all strive daily to be examples one to another as our commitment unto Almighty Yah is to please. Hallelujah. A faithful wife is devoted, faithful, and she has strength. Shirak 26 Verse 13, a wife's virtue delights her husband, and her discretion and skill puts fat on his bones. He takes great delight. He doesn't have to tell her how beautiful she is all the time, or she is his strength. His eyes will speak the volume, and he will know that my house, I have no need of war because this wife, she loves Yah, and she's going to do right by Almighty Yah, and she shall truly do right by me. Shirak 26 and 14. A silent wife is a gift of Yahweh. And there is nothing so precious as a disciplined nephesh. Daughters, as we learn to study to be quiet, to hear the messenger, to hear the aged women, you just be quiet. You learn from being quiet. And then you can hear when you're talking and she's talking, you're not going to gain anything because you're trying to show the aged mother how much you know. We, can I tell you, she knows what you know. That's why she's instructing you. So a disciplined nephesh, your soul, that's your nephesh. You must learn how to bring it under subjection. You can't always be crying about you want this and you want that. You must learn to be content in whatever state you're in. And then sometimes you're gonna lack things in your life. That doesn't mean that Yah's not with you, He is with you. He's gonna always prove you daughters. We are in this world, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So Yah's always gonna, He's gonna always prove us to find do you truly love me? 
or you just for riding along for the fish and the loaves. We must commit to Almighty Yah. We must empty ourselves out of all the filth and the vile things about us because it's not about us, it's about Almighty Yah. How we walk before Him, how we study to be quiet, how we know where our place is. I know my place as a woman. I know my place. And we must all get there. But it only comes by when you shemak. When you truly hear the messenger, it will teach you how to be quiet so that you can hear. A modest, shamefaced, and faithful, devoted wife adds virtue to virtue. And her contented mind and chaste nephish cannot be valued. When your mind is content, Dora, you don't have to have this. You don't have to have a new frock every week. I'm a shoe lady. I love shoes. I love shoes. But if I can't get another pair, I'm content. We must get there. We must understand it's not about the clothes that you wear or getting your hair done every week or every two weeks. However often you get it done. It's not about that. It's about having your mind clothed with righteousness. How I must please Almighty Yah. Can I tell you, our beauty doesn't come from your, your beautiful hairstyle or letting some woman with long nails that's been out, out all night sleeping with some strange man or men and then come and anointing your head. That's what that is. That's why we must learn to do our own hair. Care for what Yah has given you. You say, well, you, I love my, my nappy, kinky hair. It's beautiful. My nappy, kinky hair, that's a statement. It's beautiful. I love it. My ish loves it. So what the world thinks, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how we walk before Yah. Hallelujah. It says, like the sun rising in the heights of Yahweh, so is the beauty of a tough wife in her well-ordered home. I must read that again. Like the sun rising in the heights of the Shemayim that Yah created, so is the beauty of a tub wife in her well-ordered home. Her home must be in order. The children must hear the mother. When the father sets down the rules, she just makes sure that the children obey. But you say, I don't like that, but that's your job. That's what y'all created you to do. So whether you like it or not, you're going to have to learn to love it. Love your place as a woman. You know, we're so polluted now because we look at what the world is doing. And everybody said, well, they're wearing this new style dress or they're wearing this new hairdo. And they've got nails and you can have four done uh, in pink and three done in polka dots. You want to do what the world is doing, but that's not the beauty of a woman that says she loves Almighty Yah. It's not the beauty of a woman to say, I'm truly committed unto Almighty Yah. These are working hands. My nails stay broke off because we use a lot of bleach around here to sanitize everything. So my nails stay broke off. That doesn't mean that I'm not beautiful. But these hands are willing to labor. I love cooking. I love sewing. I love cleaning. I like things in order. I love working with the children every day. I love doing that. I take great delight in that. So you say, well, I'm lazy. I don't like doing this. Well, that's what the world says. So if your commitment is unto Almighty Yah, those words won't come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. It says, Shirak 26 and 17, like the shining lamp on the Kodesh candlestick, so is the beauty of the face and ripe age. So when you get older daughters, you don't have to worry about putting on no makeup or putting on false eyelashes or your red lipstick to make you beautiful. Your obedience unto Almighty Yah, keeping the commandments of Yah, as our young children quoted for you today, keeping the commandments of Yah and the ordinance of Almighty Yah, in your ripe old age, you will have a beauty to you. You won't have to worry about nobody waiting on you, handing for you. Y'all keep you in tough health. You'll be able to, whatever you need to do for you, you'll be able to do it. Hallelujah. Devotion is having the steadfastness 
that will never stop. Ruth was devoted to her husband as she was with her mother-in-law after her husband's death. Now we want to talk about the word steadfast. And daughters, we must be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of truth. We must be always ready to give an answer if someone asks of this tigva that is in your life. So Naomi said, Behold, your sister-in-law is gone back to her people and to her gods. Return you after your sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you, my dear mother-in-law to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your Yahweh shall be my Yahweh. Where you die, will I die. And there will I be buried. Yahweh do so to me, and more also, if anything but death separates you and me. Not only was Ruth committed to her mother-in-law and steadfast, she was just as steadfast to her mother-in-law as she was to her ish. And she wasn't going to let anything deter her. She had seen the way her mother walked, her mother-in-law walked before Almighty Yah. She had seen how she had been blessed. And if she left that, what was she going back to? So her commitment and her devotion and her steadfastness was unto her mother and law. And she didn't want to see her suffer. So she said, I'll stay with you. I, I will die with you. I'm not seeking another husband. I'm just going to stay here with you to make sure you're well taken care of. And can I tell you, I've seen women with their mother-in-law, they can't even get along. They don't, have, they don't even know how to have conversation. But can I tell you, once you start walking this Torah truth daughters, you'll know how to entreat your mother-in-law, you'll know how to be kind, and you'll know what's right to do by her. Hallelujah. Ruth 1 and 18. It says, when she saw that she was steadfast, minded to go with her, then she left speaking to her because she realized that Ruth was committed and steadfast and unmovable. She, she had seen the hand of Almighty Yah and the blessings that come with your commitment. Dictation, the, I'm sorry, the dedication is expressed in great gladness. Dedication of walls and organizations of the tabernacle services. Hallelujah. So we're gonna go to Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 27. And the dedication of the walls of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgiving and with singing, with cymbals, sorcery, and with heart. So when you're dedicated to something, you're joyful about it. You sing praises, you rejoice, you get your timbrel, and you dance and you sing to Almighty Yah. There is nothing that is greater than a ready wife for the ish, dedication in, in her honor for her man. We must honor our man. Wherever you go, you wouldn't go anywhere and just show out. Or, what would you call it? Just bring shame upon yourself. You're not just bringing shame upon yourself, but you bring shame upon your ish, your man. And you wouldn't want him, because if they speak about you, they're talking about him. And the first thing they would say is that that man has no control over that woman. She shows off when she gets ready. She's never content. Well, in this walk of life, if you study this book, and study your own ways, you will learn how to be content in your Yeshua HaMashiach. Want to go to Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. 
and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for Yahweh the Abba, most powerful, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to his name. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. So we must make ourselves ready. We must prepare ourselves for Yahshua HaMashiach. And you know how you make yourself ready? It starts in your mind, emptying out all the trash, your foul thoughts. Can I tell you, nobody makes you think evil. Your thoughts come from you. My thoughts, if I think evil of somebody, they came from me. I talk to me more than I talk to anybody all day long. So you have to get rid of your vile thoughts, and you have to let the pure thoughts of Almighty Yahweh reign here. Dedication is the root of a loyal wife. When you're dedicated, I've seen women, not many, that truly are dedicated to the ish. And it is the utmost, the utmost beauty of commitment. When you're loyal to your husband, and yet, can I tell you, you always, always want to please him. Your loyalty brings a beauty about you that no of makeup could never touch. Makeup and your false eyelashes too. Let's go to Sharat 26 and 1. It says, Blessed is the husband that has a virtuous wife, and the number of his days will be doubled. A virtuous, loyal wife rejoices her husband. He's not downtrodden. He's always joyful. There are not many things can move him out of his element. And he will be complete in his years. In Shalom. A tough wife is a great blessing. She will be granted among the blessings of the man who fears Yah. So when a man fears Almighty Yah, Yah just restores him with blessings on top of blessings. And if a woman that fears Yah, and she's a tough woman, she will be granted those same blessings. Hallelujah. It says when one is committed, one is loyal, faithful, true, true-hearted, devoted, steadfast, dependable. Y'all's looking for dependable people in this hour. It's like having a friend. And you know you can't get the job done unless that friend shows up. Yet you strive to do it anyway. But you know if you just had that friend there to help you. And just to assist just a little bit. You know that the job will be complete. There's nothing like a dependable friend in this hour. Trustworthy, reliable. And today, daughters, you just don't find many like that. You may find one or two, but you're not going to find many like that. And can I tell you, when you find a friend like that, you hold on to that one. Yes, a friend will tell you the truth. If you find someone's always lying to you, flee that one, because that's not a friend. Because when time, a battle comes forth, they're going to leave you. And when you really, really need that one, they won't be there to stand with you. But a friend... A true, dependable friend, they will always be loyal to the death. Did you hear me? They will be loyal to the death. I will open up each of these attributes on loyalty of a tough wife. Sharat 26, 15. It says, a modest, shame face and faithful wife, she adds virtue to virtue and her contented mind and chaste nephesh cannot be valued. And it can't, daughters. When you are faithful, you're contented in whatever state you're in. I can say you don't have to have a new frog. You don't even have to have one once a month. You're content with what things you have and you take care of what things you do have. And in your little place of abode, you keep everything clean and in order. The house smells beautiful at all times. And you're making that way not only for you, but for your 
Free to ish. This is the ultimate beauty of a faithful wife. She expresses this towards her ish that she trusts. We want to go to Lucas chapter 16, verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So daughters, living in a community setting like this, if you're not faithful, I'll say just faithful and just doing your dishes. You have to, you do breakfast dishes and you sit around and you look to see if somebody else is going to do it. If you're not faithful, and then when you do it, you don't do it with the right attitude, you wouldn't be faithful in much. You say, well, if y'all gave me a little bit more, maybe he let me do the menu for the week and I'll do the inventory once a week. If you're not faithful in the least, you would be faithful in the much. It says, if, if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous matters, who will commit to your trust in true riches? If you can't be faithful with just, um, really, just watch my children for 10 minutes, I'll be back. And I come back and you're gone. And my children are just sitting here waiting on, who's going to watch over me? Well, Mommy, she was here, but she left. If you're not faithful in watching over my little ones, I ask, well, you wouldn't be faithful if I asked you to, really, uh, could you make a deposit for me at the bank? You wouldn't be. Because you take light of it. So if you're not faithful in the small matters, you wouldn't be faithful in greater matters. It says, uh, and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? So this is Almighty Y'all talking to us. We must be truly committed and faithful in everything that we do. In everything. From the washing of the dishes to the cleaning of the bathrooms. You say, well, I don't want to do it. I don't feel like doing it. I didn't make that mess. You're not faithful. You're not a faithful student. And that's what Yah's looking for, a faithful steward unto him. The things that are not, are the things that cannot break. It is the perfect bond. And that perfect bond is marriage. If there's a perfect bond in marriage, nothing can break that. Nothing. So we want to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, put on therefore, as the elect of Almighty Yah, co-dash and beloved, bowels of kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Well, I suffered with her today. I don't think I can do it tomorrow. Long-suffering. Well, you mean I got to long-suffer with this daughter two days back to back? Long-suffering. What if Yahshua had given up on me? So the kind of kindness, compassion, humbleness, and long-suffering he's shown me, I'm going to show the daughters of Zion. You can't get weary in well-doing. It's just like raising children. You say, well, I'm sick and tired of talking to Bobby all day long. So I'm going to let Bobby do whatever he wants to do. A child left himself will destroy himself. You know, here at Teshua, we have our own school. So you have to work with the children all the time. Some of them get it and some of them don't. They don't all get it at the same time. So you have to be willing, long-suffering, patient, and work with the one that's a little bit slower. You can't get mad, say, I'm sick of this, I'm just going to throw in the towel. You can't throw in the towel. Because if you throw in the towel, who's going to be willing to work with little Bobby? So that's where the long-suffering comes in. We have to be long-suffering with each other, with our children, with our ish. And as you get older, daughters, the body don't always respond like it used to when you were young and you could just jump out of the bed. You have to be careful and caution with each movement, getting out of the bed and making it to the restroom so that you don't wet yourself. So. As we learn long-suffering and patience, we have to show that towards our ish, 
not only to our ish, but to one another. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 and 13. It says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Well, how many times do I have to forgive you? Seven times, seven in one day. Well, what if you do something all day? Most of the time, folks aren't going to do nothing to you all day. If they do something one time, that's about all you're going to get. You just got to make sure you're in the right frame of mind and you have to do right. If they did wrong, then you tell them that they did wrong. But you can't stay mad all day. I don't even like to mess my day up like that. Yes, I like to be in a tough mood all day long. It doesn't always turn out that way, but I make myself make it that way because Yahshua has suffered greatly. And if he suffered greatly and was willing to lay down his life, for me, I can overcome somebody saying something smart. I can overcome that. Hallelujah. It says, and above all these things, put on love, the Ahava of Almighty Yah, which is the bond of perfectness, perfection. The Hava of Yah, perfection. And we want to be made perfect. And the only way you're going to be made perfect, daughters, we must obey this truth. Hallelujah. When you truly learn how to love, you are committed unto death, and you won't let nothing move you out of your place. You know who has created you. You know what God has created you for. You won't let nothing move you out of your place. A true bond of true commitment is based on promises, pledges, vows, word of honor. Yahweh pledged to all that all are his. So we must have a relationship in the marriage as the same. Hallelujah. We want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. It says, But as Yahweh is true, our words toward you was not yes and nay. Verse 19. For the Son of Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silas and Timothy Yah, was not yes and nay, but in him was yes. For all the promises of Yahweh in Yahshua are yes. And in him so be it. May it be fulfilled to the honor of Yahweh by us. We, the people that say we know Almighty Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach, we must fulfill this Torah truth. Yahshua came in the volume of the book and he fulfilled all the commandments of Almighty Yah. And we must do the same. We must have a commitment and a devotion unto Almighty Yah. We must dedicate our lives every day. We must repent every day. We must have the shalom in our minds Every day, by picking up this daily lecture, we read it to ourselves. We read it to our children. We live it. We work it. We obey it. This truth will make you free, daughters. We are sealed unto death if we obey this truth. And as I've learned over the years, by my obedience, can I tell you, I've made some mistakes too. When you make the mistakes, you suffer from that. But when you truly hear the messenger and you correct your ways, then there's a blessing to go with that. There's strength that you can stand that next trial. Yah tries his people. He tries us to prove us. Did you hear me, daughters? Almighty Yah, he only tries us to prove us. Do you truly love me? Are you truly willing to lay down your life as Yahshua HaMashiach has laid his life down for you and me. You and me. You and me. He's laid his life down for us. So we must commit our lives unto him. We must search our hearts. 
and our minds diligently. Everything in there that's not pleasing before him, we must cast it down. And you must willing to be in it, you must be willing to be an example that others can see. Not because of you say it, but we must see it by your daily living. In this community setting that we here have here at Teshua community, we see each other every day. We see each other at prayer in the tabernacle. We see each other in the dining hall at breakfast. We see each other in the schools with our children. We see each other at lunch, at dinner, and at prayer in the evening. So that you, when you, you pretend, you know, others know when you're pretending. But if you are new on board, that new one must have someone that they can pattern their lives after. So that's why the aged woman that has an experience with Almighty Yah must be there for that weaker vessel. There was one time that I was weak. And can I tell you, I told the Yah for Rayat Dawi because he was my strength. Back then there weren't many daughters that were walking this way. So I only had one that I can always remember. And this was back in 1978. And her name was Mother Dorsey. She was an example to me. She wasn't worried about being like the world. She just said in her mind she wanted to please Almighty Yah. And she would tell me things to do. I never argued with her. I would just hear her. And she would make time just to talk with me and to instruct me in righteousness. And I never told her I know a better way or I'm going to do it this way. Maybe I need to go that way. I would just listen. And because I knew that I had been in sin, and I want to please Almighty Yah. I said, if I just have someone to help me. And she was there to help. So we as doors, if we could ever learn that, you would get strength from that. Hallelujah. So we must commit to the true and living Yah. That's the only way you're going to have victory, daughters. The only way. Hallelujah. So you must make your dedication your devotion, your loyalty. There should be a bond, not only with your ish, ish but unto Almighty Yah. Your obligation is a duty unto the Creator. He has created you. That's your duty, to be faithful. It's your duty to be faithful. And then at the end of the day, you still find that you've fallen short, but you purpose in your heart that the next day, I would do better, and I will commit, and I will be found faithful. So Yahshua is going to return. Is he going to return for people that's not faithful? Is he going to return for those who just say, I can do it this way, I've been doing it this way all my life? No. Yahshua is going to judge the righteous, and he's going to judge the wicked. So which side are you on? There are only two kinds of people in the world. Only two. There's no middle ground. No middle ground. They're the wicked, the unrighteous, and then there's the righteous. And you say, well, who's righteous? Those that keep the commandments and the statutes of Almighty Yah. So if you're keeping this Torah truth, then you can truly say that you're a righteous daughter of Zion. If you're not, if you've got to go to the nightclub, if you're sleeping around, you know you're not a daughter of Zion. If you don't like willingly working with your own children, you know you're not the one. So as you study this, this book, this living truth, it will make you free. You don't want to, and you won't want to look like the world. You know what the world looks like. You know what they're asking for. You cover yourselves. That's why we had the Kodash dressing daughters. Because I wanted you to see how we dress here. We, just, we don't just dress like that. On the Shabbat, we dress like that every day. We cover ourselves every day. Nobody's showing anything. You say, well, your sisters are. We have small sisters here, but we still, don't, we still cover ourselves. We're not trying to look like the world. Our beauty comes from obeying the truth, not painting ourselves up, not putting false hair on. What hair we have, Yah gave it to us. We take care of what Yah has given us. And can I tell you, you're going to be held accountable for that? You said, well, it's nappy. I love, like I said, I love my nappy, kinky hair. Yahshua's hair was kinky. No, it wasn't straight. Those pictures they paint with the long wavy hair, that's not, I don't know who that is. 
is not Yahshua HaMashiach. He has short, kinky hair. So I take great delight in my short, well, it's not as short as it used to be, but I take great delight in my hair that Yah has given me. And you teach your daughters to love who they are in Yahshua. It's something you should do every day, practice truth, and you tell your children the truth. If you're committed unto Almighty Yah, you speak truth, not a lie. You don't lie to make people laugh. You don't lie to have friends. You speak truth. And you tell your children, even the history books, they lie to us. They lie. So you tell the children what history we do know, we teach it to our children. We were brought up in slavery. You teach them that. That our ancestors were brought up in slavery. We were despised because of the color of our skin. So you teach that to your children. How, we don't wait on the public schools and not their materials to teach our children. We teach and we instruct and we live righteously before our children. They have an example. They have an example. Can I tell you the messengers here? They are examples. Reak Dawi, Zakin Yaramiya, Zakin Benamin. These men have been here and they are examples. The young men can pattern their lives after these men here. So we have learned, the daughters of Tezai, we've learned how to be humble, not to exalt ourselves, not to wear worldly attire. You say, well, you say you buy your clothes, but it's not worldly looking, daughter. Nobody's trying to go out making no fashion statement in no plaid shirt like this and covering their hair. I cover my hair because the book tells us to cover our hair. You say, what if you get hot? Well, if I get hot, I'll just fat myself. I'll sit in front of the fan, or I'll go and sit in the air-conditioned room so I can cool off. So wearing my head covering doesn't keep me from not being uh, overheated. So if I get too hot, I'll not cool myself off. If you drink water, that'll cool you off. Drink water at room temperature. So there are no excuses in Yahshua. We just must learn to we have to deny all our vile, evil ways. We must, daughters. That's the only thing that's going When you acknowledge that you are vile and you're evil, you're not sweet because you smile or because you got big eyes and you can bat. That doesn't make you sweet. Your sweetness and your beauty comes from obeying the Torah truth. Who the Son makes free is free indeed. So today I can truly say that I'm free indeed. I'm going to strive every day to be an example to the daughters here. Wherever I go, I, I'm an example. I don't ever want to bring shame on my ish. He has loved me much, and I want to show him. I want to love him even more than he has loved me by my faithfulness and my commitment unto Almighty Yah. So if I'm committed unto Almighty Yah, I'll be committed unto my ish. So we told Yah for his kindness for even giving us this time that we can come and share with you daughters. Hallelujah, they don't have fellowship when you can have fellowship by going on YouTube and coming to Teshua community. Hallelujah, we're busy here at this time preparing and having school. We're still having school here at Teshua. And then we have a baby on the way. So I'll say prayerfully between, I'll say this week and next week, We'll have a new one here. Hallelujah. And I always assist with uh, the fathers. Hallelujah. So we told you all for all things, daughters, let your commitment and your faithfulness be unto Almighty Yah this day and henceforth. In Yahshua's name, shalom, shalom. And we hope you all enjoy the teaching today. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, and greetings from Teshua community. Today, Yom Rishon, the first day of the week, and with me I have Davida. Say shalom, Davida. Shalom. Tiffy, say shalom. Shalom. And today, our whole Saki and I have been working in the kitchen. She's on the other side, and we've done pizza today. We've done eight pizzas, but right here on the bar, we're only gonna start out with three. We have deer pizza, 
We have turkey pepperoni pizza. We have hamburger pizza. We have vegan pizza. And then we just have plain cheese pizza. So with the pizza today we have vegan beans. We eat clean here at Tashua Community. Vegan beans. Corn on the cob. And with the corn on the cob, we have butter to go on it. Oh, it's melting too. And we have Waldorf salad. It's just apples, raisins, pecans, a little bit of cinnamon, and raisins. And then we have a special treat from my daughter, a Hosekia miniature cheesecakes. So another wonderful meal to start our art team out for the week as they have labored today out hunting deer. I think we got one today and we got three on this past week. And we have done some of everything with our deer this week. So daughters again, y'all would rock you. Have an excellent, excellent week and I'll see you on Tuesday. Shalom, shalom, say shalom, shalom.